Hello everyone, this is Nitpeaky Nerd and this is my review of episode 10 of season 3 of The Orville, which might possibly be the last episode ever because we don't yet know if the show will get renewed, a few of the actors signed on to other projects, and the fact that they hurried up to wrap up uh, most of the storylines makes it all feel as if the whole series is ending which would make me a little bit sad, but at least they did wrap things up. If uh, they didn't and the show would get cancelled and never continue, that would have been way more annoying if all these loose ends were left hanging. If it will indeed end up as the series final, at least it's a good final, they wrapped most uh, things up, not everything, we still have that storyline about Mercer's half krill daughter, who he hasn't rescued yet, and uh, we still have the Krill as the villains, and the Macklins as the villains, and we have those uh, new biological mutant things. They'll probably become the next uh, big villains and all of that, so the show still has a lot of potential, that's why I do wish it will continue. But if not, we still have uh, three wonderful seasons, and uh, kind of a nice ending. And uh, this episode wasn't as epic and action-packed as the previous one, and I remember as I was watching this episode, I wondered why didn't they switch the order, why didn't they put the previous episode, episode 9, as the last one, because that one was the most epic and action-packed, and the one that concluded most of the storylines, and episode 10 was kind of slower, it's kind of more personal about the characters, but there was one joke which was dependent on being set after the previous episode, because it involved the Kalons, who are friendly with the Union at this point, and so when we got to that scene, I got it why this one had to be set after the previous one. And so the previous episode concluded all the bigger galactic events, and this episode concluded some of the personal storylines, as well as bring back a character from way back in season 1, uh, that uh, lady from the planet with the upvote and downvote system, who ended up helping them uh, rescue Lamar from that planet, and in the end of that episode we saw that she understood why her culture has problems because of everything that happened, and this episode kind of brings her back, which makes me wonder if the show will go on, maybe she'll become a permanent cast member as well, maybe instead of Charlie who got killed off in the previous episode, maybe that's why they brought her back to the ship, uh, so that she can be that character in the next season, kind of the same kind of type as Charlie was, and it's always nice to have a character from the past or from a more primitive culture to be put into the futuristic setting because then we can see through that character's eyes how everything looks so amazing and all of that and also it's a way to have exposition explained to someone without directly talking to the audience but explaining it to a character who is not from that setting and just a, a character who is a fish out of water is always fun as well. And so we have this whole B-plot about her uh, contacting the Orville, because apparently she stole one of their devices uh, during their previous visit. And all of that kind of reminds me of the TNG episode, First Contact. Also about an alien planet who is kind of on the same level as uh, our current day Earth is. And that lady scientist who in the end of the episode wanted to go with them on the Enterprise. And the only difference was that uh, that was because she was a scientist who always dreamed about going to space and stuff like that. And so she just jumped on that opportunity and not just because she wanted to escape her oppressive society or something, as in this case. Here it's this woman basically wanting to leave her planet because her planet is so terrible and so bad, and not because she's so curious about space and all of that. So it wasn't as good and lovely as uh, the TNG episode, and that's one of my complaints about the Orville, that uh, there's a lot of similarities to Star Trek and especially to TNG, but it's always kind of uh, lagging behind a little bit. It's not just as good as it could be. And that's something that annoys me a little bit, because the potential is here, and yet they kind of don't quite get all the way there. And so it feels like a missed opportunity, that they could have done it more, they could have said she just wants to go out in space, to see space, to see the universe and stuff like that, and then we can see everything from her eyes, her sense of wonder about the universe, but instead they say it's because her culture is so annoying, and that's why she wants to leave, and then they allow her, they pick her up from that planet, and take her out into space, and then they show her the simulator, which really reminds me of the TNG episode when Wesley Crusher showed his alien girlfriend the holodeck, and uh, he showed her wonderful places in the universe, and here we have Kelly showing her the inside of some asteroid environment, in which some aquatic life forms live, and she also mentions that uh, they're actually intelligent and they're members of the Union, so that makes me remember Star Trek 4, and uh, that whole idea in TNG that uh, dolphins apparently were also intelligent, and are members of Starfleet and stuff like that, which we also saw in Lower Decks when we saw that aquatic 
room on the ship in which they're working and stuff like that so it made me remember that maybe that's another setup for the future i, I hope so because uh, that's something i wish we will see more in the future as the special effects become easier and better we can finally see some uh, different varieties of aliens of all kinds and not just human looking aliens and uh, we also had the scene in sig bay of some alien visiting the doctor and showing her uh, three tongues and so that's another example of something i wish we'll see more of in the future i don't want to see the entire crew made up of aliens but it will be nice to see some more exotic aliens who will look realistic and not just silly makeup and all of that so anyway back to the scenes with kelly explaining to that woman all about the union and all of that uh, it kind of reminded me of early tng when they often had visitors from the past or from primitive planets on the ship and uh, they would kind of preach to them about oh see how we have this wonderful future society in the federation and i mostly like all of that but sometimes it did feel a little bit kind of preachy kind of uh, arrogant in some ways the way they kind of pump themselves up that oh we have evolved beyond such things as you still do and so sometimes the dialogue did sound a little bit kind of annoying so i get it that some people don't like it but the overall idea of it is a good one that's the whole vision of star trek of the utopian future of showing us what humanity might become how it should be in the future all of that is something i like in star trek the dialogue should be kind of polished as not to sound uh, kind of arrogant and annoying or condescending and all of that so we had a bunch of scenes like that of explaining to that woman about how uh, like a moneyless society can work and all of that and also it had some problems with the dialogue because she asked them how come you don't just lay around all day if you don't need money you don't need to work you don't have to work why don't you lie around all day and then kelly says it's because the new currency is reputation that's basically what she said in the previous episode as well we had something like that in the previous season i think and uh, again that's the same idea like in star trek but I think it would have been better to add some gray area into all of this if they would have been honestly saying that it's not a perfect system that maybe some people maybe most people do lie around all day and not work and not do anything productive that only some people who want more then they become scientists and explorers and all of that then it would sound more believable that's something that i wish star trek would have explored more of i do wish we would have seen some characters like that we did have a little bit of that in deep space nine when we had uh, jake sisko who's just uh, enjoying his life and just writing books and stuff like that and not really working they kind of tried to make him a journalist in the later seasons and we also had that uh, character of Bashir's dad who they basically implied was just pretending to work in all kinds of prestigious jobs while in reality he wasn't and so it kind of reminded me of that uh, to hear Kelly explain that the new currency is reputation that if you don't work then uh, that's frowned upon and so you have to do something with your life and all of that so even though there are no material needs anymore there is still some social expectation for you to do something to be considered uh, a so-called rich person with your reputation and all of that but still i would say that probably most people in that future will just be lying around all day and just pretend to work like bashir's dad and that can be okay they can simply say that the people we see in the fleet of the union that's simply the people who were more ambitious the one who did want to go out into space and so they did work hard they did become scientists and explorers and all of that and that will be fine we don't have to hear that all of humans are like that not all humans will be so hard working most of them probably will be lazy but that's okay if the utopia is so well constructed that everyone are rich basically there are no material needs anymore then i guess it will be okay for 99 percent of people just doing nothing and just one percent being the hard working ones who get uh, things done that can be a nice issue to explore as well one day maybe you know society will deteriorate after a while that uh, most people will not know how all the technology works and all of that and then it can be like in that uh, tng episode about aldea that planet uh, in which a computer runs everything and so the people forgot how everything works and that's a problem in their future and all of that so i think the way they had all those scenes uh, sounded kind of preachy like uh, the early tng episodes about those kinds of things but i still like the overall idea of it the whole escapism feeling that this is a wonderful future in which everyone are happy in which you have everything basically everyone are rich it's the perfect escapism to watch a show about the future of humanity in which humanity is prosperous in which there are things like the replicator and everyone are happy and the characters that we do see are the role models the people who do want to progress themselves who do want to become scientists and explorers because they're clever people they're intellectuals and all of that so 
I think it's the perfect kind of fantasy world, the perfect escapism to watch a show like TNG and like the Orville, which show us such a bright future. That's something I personally enjoy, and I also always liked uh, the relaxed episodes of TNG, the ones that not uh, have a lot of action, just showing us the life on the ship, which were very calm and relaxed. Uh, that made me calm and relaxed to watch that. So this episode of the Orville was like that. It didn't have a lot of big things happening. It didn't have a big action adventure or something like that. But it was still fun to watch it without uh, being on the edge of your seat all the time. And there is something calming about it. It's like that episode of TNG, uh, Data's Day, which was just about his life on the ship, just him going around the ship. And this episode of the Orville also starts like that with Isaac going around the ship, just meeting people and stuff like that. And then we also see that Clyden and Bortus are getting back together and they need to renew their wedding vows. And so they have to go down to a planet in which they both get naked and uh, Clyden has to run into the forest and uh, Bortus has to chase him until he catches him and uh, rapes him basically. And that's how their marriage gets renewed and he invites the whole uh, bridge crew to witness uh, this glorious event. And especially funny was after they come back from the sexual event, they kind of uh, hug and the, the crew looks at them and there's this dramatic music and then the music ends and you expect the scene to end but then it just continues and then uh, everyone just looks awkwardly not knowing what to do. That was hilarious. That's the kind of uh, subtle humor I love the Orville for. Just the way they edit it and uh, also the way that some of the characters are just kind of straight faced. In the middle of the comedy, you know, characters like Bortus, who later in the show tries to do kind of stand-up comedy, and is just kind of brutally honest about everything, <laughs> and that's the joke, I guess, and everyone else finds it uh, awkward, uh, and he's totally oblivious, and also the character of Isaac, who is emotionless, and so often doesn't get the jokes, and so he's kind of uh, shocked to, to hear some of that stuff. So I love all that kind of humor, and uh, even the sexual jokes and stuff like that, that's something that I personally find really funny, it reminds me of my own edits of Star Trek when I often would make things uh, more sexualized because it was so unexpected in the situation of the normal show that it made it funnier. Here in the Orville we kind of got used to it I think so maybe it's not as funny as it was in the beginning but still they managed to do some comedy moments like that awkward standing around not knowing uh, how to continue after the music ends and the scene goes on somehow so that was funny. So anyway, after witnessing this ceremony, Isaac has the idea that maybe he should also propose marriage to Dr. Finn, and he does, and then uh, Lamar tells him that maybe he should sample other women before he commits to one woman, and then he tries to offer Kelly a chance to mate with him, which he refuses, and then Dr. Finn comes to Lamar and threatens him never to influence Isaac in a negative way. And uh, the pacing was a little bit slow in some places, like if it was up to me, I would probably edit it down a little bit. There were some scenes which were unnecessary or unnecessarily long, so I would have trimmed it down a little bit if it was up to me, because I do think some people will probably find it boring. But I personally enjoyed it, as I explained, because I love those kinds of episodes in TNG, episodes like Data's Day, which was mostly just about life on the ship and all of that. And also we do have this B-plot about the woman from the planet who now has some uh, guilty conscience because she abandoned all her planet and now she sees all this wonderful technology and she asks Kelly how come they don't give that technology to more primitive planet and then Kelly has to explain why it wouldn't work. So it's kind of the same idea as the Prime Directive in Star Trek and also she brings her to the holodeck, to the simulator room, sorry, to show her what happened to some planet which they did help out in the past and then uh, they gave them technology and they ended up destroying themselves. That also reminds me of some other episodes of Star Trek, like that episode of Enterprise, when Archer brought someone down to his own planet which was uh, destroyed by some civil war. So there's a lot of similarity to Star Trek here and uh, the woman isn't really convinced and so she decides to go back to her home planet and then when she goes into the shuttle they detect that she tried to steal some uh, device with uh, all the schematics of all their technology to presumably give it to scientists on her planet so that they can have all this amazing technology and they obviously cannot allow that. That scene also reminded me of uh, the TNG episode A Matter of Time about that uh, scientist from the future who turns out to be from the past, who tried to steal their technology to bring it back to the past and they didn't let him. So always a lot of similarities, a lot of inspiration from previous track. And not always is good, that's one of my criticisms, that uh, often they kind of make the same kind of idea, 
and visually it's often better like that scene in the holodeck showing uh, here all the amazing places in the galaxy it's obviously visually better than it was done in tng and yet something is lost something is missing something just isn't as good also not as original because it's basically the same idea again and i always say if you're going to recycle the same idea at least make it better at least improve something but if it's not as good then it's disappointing then it just feels like a cheap copy so that's a, a minor nitpick I have of the show. So anyway, Dr. Finn agrees to marry Isaac and then they're preparing the wedding and we have that scene of her uh, trying out all the different dresses in that room that we previously saw in which they can replicate uh, clothing and apparently you can just uh, have it appear on your body and you can measure it uh, and look at it immediately, which is a nice idea. That reminds me of that episode when uh, Data's daughter Lal was picking up her appearance and she can just make her look like anything she wants in the holodeck. Here it's not the holodeck, here it's apparently standing on the replicator pad and then you can just replace it with something else and uh, that's the kind of scene that uh, that lady should have been in before the conversation about the material needs no longer existing. I think that was a missed opportunity as well. She should have witnessed that to see that they can uh, create anything immediately and just uh, there are no limitations to how rich basically any person can be in this uh, universe and uh, it is understandable why she wanted to bring that technology back to her home planet because it obviously will save lives if it will prevent starvation and all of that uh, there was also a scene when they, they were discussing all of this and they kind of just explained it to her quickly why it's not a good idea and then just continued with their own daily lives and so that did make them look arrogant uncaring people who don't really care about the troubles of other people and so that was kind of a nice kind of gray area touch moment which explains the motivation of that woman to just steal their technology and of course in the end they don't let her and she does decide to stay on their ship in the end after she's shown that uh, holo simulation of some other planet which they did they try to help out in the past in the early days of exploration of the union and they did mess up that other planet but you know that does beg the question you know it doesn't have to be that way maybe they can do it in a different way to guide a new planet into better technology without it causing troubles and so it did kind of feel kind of preachy similar to TNG when they had those strict laws about non-interference and all of that and I'm not sure I'm 100% agreeing that that's the right ideology because who says that it will always be like that maybe there are ways to help uh, poorer planets without it turning into a disaster so maybe that is something that they should be kind of exploring that possibility of and not just immediately deciding no it can never work and will not even try ever again so that's something that always kind of annoyed me a little bit that whole issue of the prime directive is a little bit of a flawed philosophy because who says that every planet is exactly the same maybe some aliens will be more ready for it uh, better than others and so who are you to decide right from the start that it can never work obviously the whole idea of the prime directive is a clever intellectual topic i made a whole very long video just about that topic and because it's so complicated that's why i don't like it when they kind of try to simplify too much that uh, no it can never work because it just didn't work once when we tried it so obviously it cannot work and we'll never try it again so that's kind of a very simplistic way to explain things and also this whole subplot in this episode didn't really go anywhere it wasn't really that necessary it probably should have been its own episode just about that woman and her planet and uh, it would have been nice to revisit that planet and yet they don't even show it in this episode so it just felt like kind of uh, a remnant that they didn't know where to put and so they put it in this episode and it wasn't really necessary for the bigger plot which was about the wedding between Finn and uh, Isaac and my favorite part of the episode is probably when Isaac invited the Kellons to his wedding and then they all showed up that was the funniest part when he invited Kaelon primary to the wedding and then uh, he asked uh, should we all show up and Isaac says uh, why not and then their entire fleet showed up thousands of ships all showed up around the Orville to participate in the wedding so that was hilarious and that's why they had to make this episode after the previous one they had to make all of this after they made peace with the Kaelons otherwise it wouldn't make sense and it was nice to see the Kellons being friendly now. I guess uh, they kind of easily forgot or forgave all of them for basically trying to wipe out whole life in the galaxy and suddenly they're their best friends. So it does feel a little bit rushed, but because it's such a comedic show, that makes it easier to accept such silliness. And so I'm fine with it. It was funny. It was entertaining. And that was the funniest scene when he invited all the Kellons to his wedding. And we also had some scenes of the bachelor parties 
and Bortus tries to be like Elvis and just bores everyone and the women having a, a strip club kind of a party with a Kelon dancing around which I guess was just a simulation and we also had the scene when the sandwich from the past shows up finally so that's something that uh, was obvious was going to happen toward the end of the season I think it would have been funnier if the sandwich showed up randomly maybe during those uh, action scenes the battle scenes against the Kelons if a sandwich randomly appeared on someone's head or something that probably would have been funnier but I guess logically it had to appear in the exact same spot on the ship where it disappeared because I guess that quantum time device links the object to its surroundings so it has to appear in the same exact place otherwise it should appear randomly in empty space because the ship is no longer in the same place as it was when it disappeared so obviously it has to be attached somehow to the exact place where it was in the past and the device itself was kind of destroyed or damaged and so logically it wouldn't appear next to the device so it would have been funny if it just appeared in the last scene just floating in space that also would have been funny, but seeing Gordon's reaction to it was kind of funny as well. So anyway, all the Kalon ships show up to the wedding, and at first the Kalons don't understand what a wedding means, and then Isaac tries to explain it to them, and then they say that it sounds like slavery, and they ask, the, are the biologicals attempting to enslave you again? And then he says no, and so anyway, they transmit the entire wedding to all the Kalons, and we have some of the Kalons show up into the actual wedding, and there's also the funny scene when Bortos tries to do stand-up comedy and he's just been brutally honest about everything and also the way that Isaac also doesn't fully get it and just looks at it all in shock to hear some of the stuff that Gordon is saying and all of that so I loved all those kinds of scenes and I love the conclusion of the storyline of this love story which started out with just one episode which I thought was going to be it just like in TNG there was just one episode of that time his girlfriend and how it didn't work and then there was no continuation so when the Orville did the same kind of thing I thought it's just one episode but then they continued it and developed it more and more and that's something that is uh, better that is something that makes you care about the characters and the situations and the relationships much more because you had it across multiple episodes so you start to care about it you care about the outcome of all of it and so that's why this episode which was about a wedding did work in my opinion because it's not just some random crew members getting married just like you know O'Brien and Keiko got married in one episode even though they did continue that relationship in Deep Space Nine but uh, that relationship was kind of annoying in many ways because of the way they kind of portrayed Keiko is always causing trouble always being annoying wife and all of that so anyway that's a different discussion so here I do enjoy it that they continued with that love story and wrapped it up it kind of reminds me of uh, the Riker and Troy marriage in uh, Star Trek Nemesis which was the last movie which kind of wrapped up that relationship which constantly they were kind of on the edge of coming back together but never did in TNG and yet finally in the movie they got married so it did have some weight it's not just some random wedding between some random crew members and so that's why it did work in this episode in my opinion and also we have a hint of possibly Kelly and Ed coming back together because they kind of look at each other and kind of hold hands and all of that so we have that possibility that is hinted at and it was just nice to see the whole crew and all the different aliens all being together, all being happy together, including the Kelons, who I do wish they would have added some more interactions with them in the end because they just stand around and just look at everything and we don't really see any interactions between them and the crew. And wouldn't it be awkward because just a few episodes ago they were the biggest villains in the galaxy wanting to wipe out all life and here they're totally friendly with all of them and everyone forgave them apparently. So I do wish that it could have been done a little bit better, but overall it's still pretty good. So I think I will give this episode an 8 out of 10. And this whole season overall, I'm not sure I would say it's the best season. I think the earlier seasons were more enjoyable to me because they had more humor and I personally enjoyed the comedy aspect of it. So that's just my personal opinion. So that's all I had to say about it for now. I will probably do a lot of videos about the Orville in the future. Even if the show doesn't go on, I will go back to rewatch older episodes. I will be making a lot of edits of the episodes and I will be mixing it with Star Trek and stuff like that. So there is a lot of potential to play with with this show, which was great. I do recommend the show. And if it will end up as the last season, at least they did wrap most things up nicely. And so it will be a nice show that I will always recommend to everyone who loves science fiction and who loves the space shows and stuff like that, it will always have my recommendation. 
So that's all I had to say about it for today. Let me know what you think and we can discuss all of this in the comments below. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye.